All right, everybody. So we're getting started now. Thank you again. I um, really appreciate that you uh, have joined the waiting list. And at this point, you know, um, I don't have the library completely ready. I'm moving it to a new platform to make it um, more user friendly. Um, from both the subscriber standpoint as well as viewing ability. Um, so it, uh, the name of the, the library is Watch, Learn, Grow. And almost a year ago, I did launch a masterclass with that name. We've been um, creating content over that last year. And those videos go into um, a library. And so what you guys will be subscribing to is um, just the library portion. It won't be the full blown, you know, masterclass because the masterclass uh, has two live conference calls every month and um, where I critique work, I answer questions, and then we have a, um, a very active private Facebook group. So that's a little bit different membership. If you are interested in that, of course, you can apply. Um, that is just go to artandsuccess.com, and if you have a, a very solid background in color and design, you can apply for that. It's by application only. So currently the library has you know over 33 hours, but every month that number goes up and up and up. And the idea of video on demand, if you haven't heard that term, sometimes they abbreviate it as VOD. Um, it just means that, you know, at your fingertips, anytime if you happen to wake up in the middle of the night, you can watch a video. It's always there. So it's available 24-7 as long as your membership will be current. And then um, originally I wasn't thinking of tiered subscription levels, but um, moving to this new platform makes that possible. That's one of the reasons why I'm moving everything over, and that does take time. So I don't have all the details yet about that, but I'm working on it. Um, so again, today is our live call and we can do more of these, you know, as we kind of get ready for launch, um, because I want to answer your questions. So let's just get started here. If I can, there we go. All right. So again, I wanted to point out the different categories here, um, of what is in the library because, uh, I, I realize that you don't have access to it yet, so you don't really know. Um, one of the very large portions of the library is always going to be critique where I critique work that is submitted. So this was a call, you know, when we launched, we had, um, in this case, like five works um, that were, these are all five different artists who submitted their work. Um, they submit through a form. They give me a lot of information about what's like, where are they stuck? What's not going right for you? And then I go in, um, I spend a lot of time in, in Photoshop and just studying their work. And then we have a live call and I answer the questions. I try to offer solutions. So um, here's just a, a clip, you know, a slide from one of our live calls. Um, Susan Crew happened to ask a question. So it's either like critiquing work or it's answering questions. But she had a question about values and then I kind of highlight the question. She's asking, you know, when do I analyze the value hierarchy and placement of values and when not to? So she was looking at a Pollock painting, she's looking at a Elaine de Kooning painting and then her own because she loves bright colors. And she says, I understand the Pollock, but if we can do it with the bull, which is over here, it's an Elaine de Kooning painting, um, why not mine? And she was, you know, that was her question. So we get a wide variety of, you know, really great questions that really challenge me. I have to say to uh, be able to critique the work, it's coming from a lot of different artists, different levels, different mediums, um, different questions. A lot of times I'll use Photoshop. Uh, I don't actually show too much Photoshop during the call because it's too time consuming and I wanna like cover more work. And um, I, I typically have maybe six to eight works uh, for every call. So, but I do use Adobe Photoshop uh, CC to analyze the design, make adjustments in design and color. And sometimes I show the Photoshop changes during the call, but usually just the results. So I can do more critiques uh, each one to one and a half hours per live call. So this is a work by Kristen Hefdaner Dotter. She, I believe is from Iceland. So we have a, you know, global group. And I'm gonna hit that. Okay, um, this is work by Marit Hove, who is in Norway and, um, I wrote, I critique artwork submitted by members of my Watch, Learn, Grow masterclass by application only. Um, these artists have a solid foundation in color and design. They've taken my powerful design and personal color online course or comparable. Now, having your work critiqued is a crucial step for serious artists. 
Though the video on demand library has recorded critiques, you will learn as I discuss solutions to the many concerns and challenges a wide variety of artists at different levels have with their submitted works. So you're probably wondering like, why, why would I need to look at critique, right? And then also there's Q&A at the end of these calls. So I've kind of just outlined, you know, here's a summary of what's in these videos that are recorded live conference calls. Again, one to one and a half hours long each recorded and they become part of the library. Average number of works that I critique during each call is six to eight people. Um, artists submit their work and describe in detail the challenges they are having and then I have a Q&A. So I also address questions at the end of the call. Now, artists have universal problems with their work. So how can you learn from critiques of other artists' work? Well, you know, these are typical questions I get. Do I, do I have too many shapes? My colors aren't working. I have a lack of harmony. I don't have a focal point. I have too much. I have too little. It's chaotic. It's boring. And, you know, the list goes on. Some will say I'm stuck and I don't know what to do. Others will be like, you know, I don't know. Is my painting finished? So I see it all because I myself have also had the very same problems in my own art and I've had to find solutions. So. That's why I feel like, um, you know, this being able to critique other people's work also improves my skills. So I feel like I'm also learning from critiquing other people's work. So ask yourself, do any of you have these types of common problems with your work? And you can just like pop in the chat, say, yes, I do, or, you know, no, I don't, whatever. I'd love to hear from you. And, um, it's just kind of good to get your feedback on this, but I do feel that most things that I see come across um, when, when work is submitted, I, I can relate. You know, there's so far nothing that anyone has ever submitted to me that I'm like, huh, I've never come across that before. Okay, great, thank you. Um, looks like Sarah has responded. She says, yes, I do. Um, and any, any others want to respond in the chat window, I'd love to hear from you. So um, again, watch, learn, and grow as I critique the work of others. Okay, moving on. So who needs critique? Well, basically everyone, but not everybody realizes it. And I, I think that that's, uh, that's just uh, the way it is, right? And, but in my case, in every art class I've ever had, I think way back to probably high school, because you know, critique is something that is reserved for people who kind of are starting to understand the language of art. Um, but all the way through grad school, critique was my favorite part. I would always like love that and hope that, you know, the professor would spend enough time like talking about my work as I asked questions. So I wanted to know how well my art was communicating. Um, I received valuable feedback from my professors and I am a better artist today because of it. Um, typically in the grad program when we had like say 12 artists, you know, like the, the first person who spoke up and said, hey, you know, I, I, would you talk about my work or let, let's talk about my work, they would get the most time with the professor and then if you kind of waited and waited um, and were at the end, you'd get like one minute. So we learned that pretty quickly that the sooner you speak up, the more time you would have, you know, speaking about your work. Uh, okay, so what are some other categories? A lot of times um, I will either get like, uh, I'll see something in Facebook because we have a private Facebook group and people will like post a question and I think to myself, wow, that, that would actually be a really great call. We should jump on a Zoom call and, and discuss this. So many have done this um, over the last year or I will just on my own, you know, there like might be an exhibition in my town or maybe I'm talking about something that I feel is a topic of interest. So mostly with the Watch and Grow um, Masterclass Artists or um, in my online course, um, that's Powerful Design, Personal Color, you know, a member over on that side and that Facebook group will have a question and I might just call them up and, you know, arrange a call and say, hey, do you wanna pop on a Zoom call? And that will become a video. So just so that you know like um i intend to like all of you guys who subscribe in the in the top tier um you will be able to you know submit questions or have an idea for a topic and you know you could be featured in, in the library so basically here are some of the categories um, of videos currently in the library preparing for an exhibition and maintaining momentum after a workshop so those that was a question by one person um another uh, actually several people 
um, have asked this question about like, how do I find my personal voice? They want a unique style. And so there are a couple of members that I spent a lot of time with. Um, we kind of looked at it as a project. It's kind of an ongoing conversation and I'm going to have updates. You'll, you'll see them in the library. Um, like really digging deeply. How do you find your personal voice? Like, how do you know that that's you? And then we had an expert from the Netherlands, um, Marion Linenbank, who is in PDPC. And she was, we did a little um, video on power wax, which is a water soluble wax. You know, a lot of people were interested in that power of the sketchbook, um, creating a work for a client. So, you know, the, the questions are always art related and they're, but they're very diverse because I feel like artists have a lot of questions and, you know, people have been submitting questions for my YouTube channel, but I, I just can't get to them all. So now it's going to be really through subscription here that you're able to submit a question and actually get it answered. And again, top tier subscribers can suggest topics and even be featured in one of the Watch and Grow library videos. If you want to be, you don't have to be. Um, and this is great exposure for you and your art. So we have another category of videos, Watch and Grow painting design and color challenges. So here are just a couple examples of the current challenges in the library. One that I came up with was, I don't love these colors. Um, I actually made a video on it and, you know, I talk about making swatches of various color combinations so that you have an idea before you even get started, what is the potential of these colors you don't love, but then how can we, how can we work with them to then love the colors? So that's kind of the whole, reason why we choose colors we don't love so we can learn a way to to love them i mean maybe not love how about like that would be good uh kathy gibson submitted one called outside my window i had another one where i challenged artists to um, look at a helen frankenthaler painting where she only had like five to seven shapes um, that was very challenging to create a painting that only really had that many shapes and then color temperature is it warm or cool and then value predominance, um, that was an exercise all about like simplifying value. And that was like a very fun challenge. A lot of people participated in that. So why do we need challenges? Challenges help us push our boundaries, think in new ways and ultimately grow. So, you know, you need to be challenging yourselves um, constantly. Um, another group of videos would be my painting process, my tutorials and tips. And, and these are just like, you know, I'm in my studio. Um, you know how it is when you're, you're kind of all alone and it's kind of lonely. But um, a lot of reasons why I do my videos is because I want to share what I'm doing. And so, um, you know, in this case, I came across an old painting and you, you saw it on YouTube. But this is to point out that a YouTube video is quite short. This was like 13 minutes, but um, I then put like a 40 minute video into the library, which had way more information, um, commentary, you know, what I'm doing, why I did it. I'm very limited on the YouTube platform. It, it just doesn't, it's not the right platform for like lengthy in detail, full featured video. So that's why I reserve that content for the library. Um, and just to recap here, it's just amazing to me that I'm actually, um, I, I don't know what it is, but I, I really do enjoy the whole like making video process. But um, just so you know, one minute of video. So let's think about it like, you know, these 13 minutes, every minute of that video took four to six hours for me to create it because I have to be painting or doing something. Um, I have to set the equipment, which is the lights, the camera, the sound, um, the angles, everything. Then there's the editing of the video. There's proofing it, adding music, captions, et cetera. It goes on and on. I don't want to bore you with it, but that's um, one of the reasons why I'm very like selective with the work that you see on YouTube and then even more selective with the work that ends up in the library. So here again, this is another comparison. This was the YouTube video I launched. It was about nine minutes. And then this one was... 32 minutes. Um, this is a very like, this is a series that I had on this particular painting. But um, again, that's just an example of the type of videos you'd find in this group in the library. Another area would be techniques and tutorials. And then the experiments that I do in my studio. So like, this is a clip where I was talking about glazing and it's such an important technique, but I was really wanting to um, make it clearer. Um, and, you know, 
I'm, I'm also, yeah, working on like other projects where um, I'm, I'm doing these types of things and having a different way of presenting this information. Here is one where I brought these necklaces back from Oaxaca, Mexico, when I taught down there. And, you know, I just grabbed them because I looked at the colors and I wanted to kind of play with them. Then when I got home, I was like, well, wait a minute, um, what is the pH? The pH, you know, is it neutral? Is it acidic? I didn't know. So I got these little pH test strips, so I kind of show you that. Because sometimes you really care, and other times it doesn't really matter. But I do a lot of experiments in my studio because I do feel that art is a science, and we need to treat it that way. There's a lot of information you guys know. Um, you probably may not think of it as a science, but it is. And I, I totally believe that. I also have another section called Quick Clips. Um, these videos are a little shorter. They include short videos created for my Watch, Learn, Grow master class. So sometimes I pop into Facebook, I see somebody like post a painting, it's like, I'm stuck, what do I do? Well, we have our live calls every two weeks, but sometimes I'll do a quick like review or clip um, right, right on the spot for the, the Facebook group and then I'll record it and it'll go into the library so you get a lot of information that way. These are um, short informative videos posted in our private Facebook group. Um, a lot of times I have visiting artists, you know, either in my studio or I might go visit their studio. Okay, and then anything that I feel may be of interest. Um, okay, so I, I just look at a comment here from, this looks like, I don't know your first name, but, but your handle here is Liberty Hansen Wild. And you wrote, I have taken a couple of art classes that included critique and found it so valuable. Not only when it was my own work, but others too. It is incredibly helpful. Thanks so much for that comment. Um, that's exactly how I feel. I love hearing critiques of other people's work. It, it really doesn't matter whose work it is because everything that is talked about in a critique is like you're building that, that knowledge base. What would I do if that was me? What if I had that problem in the future? So it's all very applicable. Now, um, I, a newer area here, because I and I want you guys to know I am not an expert really on anything. I don't consider myself to be an expert. I, um, when it comes to things like digital media, you know, Photoshop, smartphones, all that kind of stuff, um, I've learned um, mostly kind of like just taught myself and, and I, I only kind of learn enough to get by. So that's the cool thing, I think, is that just keep in mind, I am not an expert, but I'm more than happy to share with you the, the things that I know um, and you'll realize that, oh, I guess I don't have to be an expert and I can still do this. And I think that's my message. You don't have to be an expert. So, I mean, I, I learned this app while I was in Oaxaca. I had arrived, I was a little bit jet lagged. Um, I, I downloaded the app because I'd heard it was good. I started to walk around Mexico in Oaxaca in an early morning and I just walked into this little cafeteria and I was like, oh, let me try this app. And anyways, that's, that's what happens, is that I kind of learn every day as I go. And then I do have a section on preparing for an exhibition. A lot of you, you know, who will end up being um, subscribers may be interested in like the professional side of being an artist. So I'm very happy to share my experience. You know, how do you submit a proposal? How do you take your photos? How do you crop them? How do you, how do you curate them before you even enter? I mean, that's a lot of information that is, is really crucial to know. And because I have a show coming up, it, it's like the ideal time for me to document what I'm doing. Um, here's another video that is already in the library on how I got the floor plan of the gallery. I went to visit them. I needed to make some calculations and then I made a model. It's to scale. These little pieces of paper here represent my paintings. They're all um, cut down to scale so that I could get a visual. Like I needed to know, do I have enough work for the show? How is it going to hang together? So a lot of information there. And then I, I totally believe in like making this fun. And then also like um, showing my appreciation for the fact that your subscription to any tier of my library is like a, a sign of like, you're supporting me and you know, you're, you're um, encouraging me and you're also allowing me to have more time to create my work and then create more videos. So it's kind of like this wonderful um, synergy, I believe. So I, I'm, I'm sponsored by a lot of different companies like Gamblin and Ampersand and I, I totally believe in like giving out prizes and you know because they're fun and they're going to be kind of merit-based. So 
let's say that you join at the top tier and you know you ask a really great question and that question becomes a video whether you're in it or not whether it's regarding your artwork or just a question that i answer the prizes will be awarded to those who are like most kind of active and like showing me that you're you know you really care and you want to learn the larger the the subscriber base the more prizes i guess that's the way it is so um that that's the beauty of it i have so many things i'd love to give as prizes like when i was in mexico again i went to this little gift shop and i grabbed these aprons that are awesome it was like right around day of the dead and you know they have all these really cool images and i i grabbed like three of them and i brought them home and i thought yeah someday i'm going to give those away as prizes so anyways that's what i'm waiting to do so at this point i want to um answer your questions and I didn't get many submitted um, via the um, the waitlist form and that's totally understandable because um, you may not know what your questions even are yet but basically this is kind of what I'm thinking but it's very kind of rough draft just so that you know but your subscription will help me continue to help you I anticipate three subscription levels but this is still to be determined so Kind of take this with a grain of salt this is kind of like well if i if i were to divide it how would i do it i'm thinking of having like a starter level uh for two dollars a month that would include the quick clips and then q a so you could submit a question get it answered the intermediate level i'm thinking five dollars a month that would include the quick clips um submit a question get it answered and then you'd have access to all the challenges and then the pro level is definitely for, you know, the artist who I think is um, has a very high level of commitment. I think it's still very affordable. You get the entire video on demand library. You can submit a question. Um, you can be featured in one of my videos and then, you know, monthly prizes are at this uh, top tier. So with that, um, I'm looking at a, um, a message in the chat from Amy. She says she missed the beginning of the call. Um, she's asking a question. Great. So, Will there be both oil and cold wax medium and acrylic videos? I love watching the oil process, but I work in acrylics and I'm always looking for more tips specific to that medium. I learned so much from you about color and composition that applies to any medium. So thank you for sharing your knowledge and thank you, Amy, for the question. To answer your question, yes, um, I work in four mediums. And on my YouTube channel, you know, you've mostly seen cold wax medium with oils and you've seen acrylic. But as I prepare for my, my exhibition, um, I'm going to be heating up my encaustic, doing demos there, sharing that information. Also, I've got encaustic monotype. That's my fourth medium that I work in. Yes, I, I feel like as an artist, you know, we all love to explore different mediums. And when I was a younger artist, and I was so confused because the reason why I worked in so many mediums was because I got stuck so many times. And every time I got stuck, I thought it was because of the medium. So I then moved on to another one and then another one and then another one. So I don't know if you guys are that way, but that's, that was part of my history. But then I, again, um, realized the importance of design and color, like really setting that foundation uh, filling up your toolbox of knowledge. It's all about like learning, learning from others. Um, you can be self-taught, you know, learn from books, learn from workshops. And once my toolbox was full and I truly understood the basics of color and design, everything changed for me. And now it was like, okay, all those mediums that I had started and worked in for say three decades, I can now go back into any medium and make it work. That's the difference. It's not about the medium anymore. So I continue to work in four mediums and um, I will be sharing that information with you. So um, does anybody have another question for me? Because uh, I don't want to take all of your Saturday. I know you guys have a lot of things to do, probably paint in your studio. Um, are there any questions that I could clarify? Damini uh, says, I really love that you support a variety of mediums. Um, yeah, and again, you know, what's different from my YouTube channel is that I'm trying to kind of guess what people are interested in. And I sometimes think, gosh, if I posted an encaustic video, nobody's going to want to watch it, right? But in this subscription group, it's different. If I get somebody saying, um, hey, I work in encaustic and I have a question about this. Well, I can easily create a video for you and it would be in the library and that's totally fine. I just don't want to like put uh, content on my YouTube channel that like nobody cares about. So that's why, um, you know, for a very low fee, you have access to me 
and you're helping me to create content that you want. It's very personalized. And I, I, you know, I feel as an artist that there's nothing I wouldn't share with you. I know that, that that's maybe in the art world, that's not necessarily the case, but, um, everything that I've ever learned, um, I need to share in any way I can, you know, we all have a limited amount of time on this earth <laughs> and I'm always aware of that as well. Like I am, I am on a, like, I don't know, every day I'm like, I, I have this day, what can I do? What, how can I make it like the best? How can I share the most? Uh, I wish I could clone myself, but I can't. So this group, I think, um, again, by subscribing um, at any level, just know that you are helping me to like find more time and have more ideas and create more information that's of interest to you. This is a way for me to like, for you to be in contact with me, me to be in contact with you. We can jump on live calls from time to time. I mean, this has been really fun for me. <laughs> so, okay. So one person says here, Sarah says, I am also interested in abstract watercolors, but I understand you don't do that at the moment. However, I am interested in all mediums. I'm really glad that you um, asked that because um, right after uh, our fire, um, we lost our home and my four studios and I lost all my watercolors, um, all my equipment, everything. And, you know, I didn't immediately replace my watercolors because by that time I had been starting to work in um, oils and um, I was working with acrylic and, you know, I just didn't, I had to choose. But then I thought, well, I need to get more watercolors. And I did that in the, probably in the last two years, I got new watercolors and I'm, I got watercolor paper, I got hot press and cold press. So just so that you know, um, Sarah, I also want to get back into abstraction with watercolor. That was what I did for like, gosh, two decades. I loved it, but that's when I plateaued and then didn't paint a darn thing for 10 years. I'm very anxious to get back to that medium and see what it looks like now that I kind of understand who I am as an artist. And so just so you know, you can expect some watercolors there. And let's see, uh, should I type my questions into something other than the chat section? Yeah, right now during this call, the best place is the chat. Um, but if you have another question and you're in one of my Facebook groups, um, go right ahead and type it there and I will try to get to it. Just so that you guys know as well, if, if you're somebody on this call or that listens to this video and you're already in my master class, my Watch Learn Grow master class, you don't need to subscribe to anything. You already have it, okay? This is like um, just the library portion. If you're in my Powerful Design and Personal Color course, you don't have access to this library. And, and I do feel that you would have a great benefit to have access to the library because everything I'm talking about reinforces what you're learning in the course. So um, it's, it's really geared for, you know, again, people who are very serious about their art and wanna make improvements. So do you, do you do image adjustments of paintings in Photoshop? Yes, Suzanne, that's exactly what I do. I sometimes show it as I'm doing it in Photoshop, but because I'm um, trying to like, critique six to eight works for every one to one and a half hour call, there's not really enough time for me to go. Like I can have 20 layers in Photoshop rather than like um, show you that process. I kind of show you in step-by-step -step screenshots of what I've done, the changes I've made. And then a lot of times the artist who I'm, whose work I'm critiquing will be on the call and I'll say, Hey, you know, um, uh, Joy, are you on the call? And, and she'll say, yes, I'm here. And then we'll talk about her painting kind of in real time. If they can't make the call, then I, it's okay. I just critique the work and then it goes into the library. Let's see. Um, the pro subscription, give us access to the Facebook group. Good question. No, unfortunately. So there is a big difference really between my master class, which has the Facebook group, which has the live calls where, you know, you interact with me in, in real time with critique. Um, that's called the Watch and Grow Masterclass. So the library is just a, like a portion of that entire membership so that um, the way that I can keep the, the tiered subscription groups very like low priced is that it's a video on demand library. So no, there is not a Facebook group. Now somebody could create one. We could certainly create a group for anybody who's a subscriber. I wouldn't be very um, present in the group, but you guys could then talk about videos. You could talk about, share your artwork. I mean, if you guys would like that, of course, that's cer certainly something we could do. Um, again, everything's kind of um, 
word organic. Everything can change. Everything can grow. And I think that's the beauty of being in contact with um, artists of all these different levels. But if anybody is interested in like more than just the library, then you might be a good candidate for the Watch and Grow Masterclass. Let me just show you really quickly. I'm going to hop back onto um, computer here. This is where you probably signed up for the waiting list because I don't know of any other way that you could have done it. <laughs> you came to my website. And um, just to review, my website is artandsuccess.com. So I have a website and this, this probably looks familiar to you because this is, again, you clicked on join the wait list. It took you to a form, you filled it out. Hopefully you've all watched this video. And of course I posted this on YouTube yesterday. So that would be another time you would have seen it. You scroll down and you can learn more about the group here. And then, you know, this, and these are the FAQs down here. Um, of course, you can cancel at any time. I, I put these questions in here. If you have an, an, another question for me, I can always pop in a, like a Q&A down here. I talk about the difference between my YouTube channel versus the library. Um, I, I talk about the master class. So let's say that you decide that, you know, you like the idea of the library, but you're like, but I want live critique. Okay, I'll show you where that is. Um, Again, you go to artandsuccess.com on the home page. You scroll down here. Um, here's my powerful design personal color course. Here's my acrylic course. Here's the bundle of both together, save some money. Resources, um, this is the place right here that you would apply for the Watch, Learn, Grow um, Masterclass. So when you click on this, you have to apply, okay, by clicking here. The reason for that is I keep the level of participants in this particular masterclass extremely high because what we talk about, we speak in a different language in a way, right? Because art is the language and everybody in that group has a very strong and firm foundation in design and color. So you don't, you, you know, you could have taken some other course, you could have taken a workshop and you feel like you have a good foundation, you submit images and then you either accept it or I'll say, well, maybe later, because I have to keep control of like how big this group gets. Um, I'm very careful. I screen and you know make sure that everybody who gets into that group is extremely serious and motivated. So that that's that. Okay, what Facebook group do you suggest we join if we are part of the pro membership? That's a great question. I think what I would do, Damini, is I would actually create a brand new one for you. Um, and that's something that we'll, we can talk about when I launch the library, but it's very easy for me to create a group. I would kind of watch it for a while and see who's like really super active and then perhaps contact that person and say, hey, would you like to be a moderator or a co-admin? Again, I wouldn't be very, I'm going to tell you right now, I won't be very present in that group, like making comments or certainly not critiquing work because I, I have to like, that's, that's my master class. That's where I spend my time. So I hope that answers your question and any other questions before we close this call? So I want to thank you all for being here on a Saturday. I wish you all very good health. And I know you're all very like, you know, aware of the coronavirus. I want you to know that I um, hope that you are going to stay well. And I hope you spend a lot of time in your studio and uh, get a lot of work done while you're probably not able to go out and do as many things as you normally would do. So thank you again for spending your Saturday with me. I look forward to um, another call perhaps to answer more questions. So I'll stay in touch with you. Thank you so much. And bye now, everybody.